I don't believe it. They're going to fight all of Hydra. Two guys, a punk and a broad, quote, a Hydra agent. What if volume one, issue five? What if Captain America hadn't vanished during World War II? In 1945, Zemo was issued orders from the Red Skull to sabotage an experimental drone that was planned to be launched from an island on the English Channel. Captain America and his sidekick Bucky tried to stop such plan, but they were captured by Zemo. Zemo then launched a plane, and when the heroes chased after it, Bucky was apparently killed when a bomb Zemo had placed aboard the plane exploded, and Captain America was thrown into the ocean, which led him into a period of suspended animation. But there came another being that day, hostile towards all humans who he deemed responsible for the destruction of his undersea race. Run, you weak, helpless mortals, before I destroy you as I do your frozen god. It is the legendary Submariner, and he has gone mad. His anger temporarily abated Prince Namor ab abandoned the frozen block he had tossed into the sea, leaving it to melt as it met the warm waters of the Gulf Stream. There, faithfully, a submarine was searching for the dangerous Prince of Atlantis. I've got him, but it isn't Namor. From that stark, spangled costume under his clothes and that shield, I I'd say giant man just grabbed Captain America and he is alive. Thus it happened that Captain America, the living legend, World War II awakened in another time, joined the elite group and superpowered mortals, the mighty Avengers. Captain America and Bucky succeeded in disarming the drone plane that would have otherwise ended their careers in the 40s. The Red Skull has Baron Zemoy put into a 20-year deep sleep for his failure. Cap and Bucky continue to fight crime and communism in the 60s with Barnes switching to calling himself Buck as he gets older. From this planet's only moon, I watch as a decade passes before my eyes and I perceive a new era with new threats. As a nation which had been an ally against the hated Nazi now engages the United States in a so-called Cold War. In this plane of reality, there is no need for a bogus Captain America and Bucky to combat any foreign spies. For the originals, though, the years older are very much alive and active. Just like the old days, eh, Buck? Only their uniforms are different cap. It is the capitalist superhero and that Bucky. Haven't you heard, Ivan? I've long outgrown that name. The name Buck now. Ah, which is more than either of you are going to be worth when we're finished with you. Shortly afterwards. Listen, Cap, there's something I want to talk over with. Hey, didn't that newsboy say something about Nick Fury? Extra, extra, war hero dies. Killed on the Korean battlefield. Didn't see the grenades thrown to his left. That old war horse. I warned him about that bad eye. Watch with me then as the 1950 gives ways to the 60s and the ever widening rift forms between Captain America and his adult partner. For though he treats the younger Buck as an equal in their battle against evil, it is still he who is the larger stature with greater strength. With the power of the super serum soldier still coursing through his veins, he is still Captain America. When S.H.I.E.L.D. is formed, President Johnson offers the job of director to Steve Rogers in lieu of Nick Fury who was killed in the Korean War. Steve initially recommends Buck instead, but after a while, Buck insists on trading places. Barnes becomes the new Captain America with Rick Jones as his sidekick and Sharon Carden as his lover while the aging Rogers accepts his new role as head of S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. along with Cap and Rick launch a decisive strike against their nemesis, Hydra. We skip forward several years to a moment where in your reality, Captain America had walked alone. And so I got to thinking, Cap, if Steve Rogers had adapted me when I was a kid, I know, partner, today your name would be Buck Rogers, right? Seriously, though, it's great seeing you again, Buck, talking about old times and all. But the time for reminiscing is short-lived as it's the Hulk. But as Captain America charges the rampaging brute, he sees a flash of green and then only black. Cap's still strong, but not like he used to be. And he isn't as fast either. So other man grabs metal dish back, leave him alone. Alone. He's just confused. That kid, it's Rick Jones. No one can beat Hulk. Good Lord, the monsters grab the boy. No one. Then, as the very building crumbles, as the Hulk missile makes its impact, a superhero is suddenly reborn. Rick's hurt, but if I can get to him before the whole bland building comes down, piling down. Oh, get away from here, Hulk. Forget the Hulk, Rick, and don't move till I tell you. Until I found out if Cap Shield is still as indestructible as it used to be. It is. And as days Cap. Captain America revive. Building falls down and Hulk will get blamed for it. Then Hulk will leave before men start shooting again. It's Rick Jones, the Hulk's friend. And if not for Buck's heroics,
comics, he would have been killed. In your world, it was Captain America himself who saved young Rick from the Hulk, but not here. Soon, in the apartment of a bruised and wary Steve Rogers. You'll be all right, lad. All you need is rest. But until we find a way to tame him, you must never return to the Hulk. I'll gladly second that statement, Cap. Huh? What? Either I'm suffering from battle fatigue or that's me only, only how you used to look. It's a little baggy, but just a little. Besides, Cap, it can be taken in. All right, partner. What's the idea dressing up in my costume? Just this, Mr. Rogers. You're too old to be playing Mass Crusader. You don't say? And I say bull. I may no longer be in my prime, but I'm still Captain America. The super soldier serum has retarded my aging enough to give me another good 10 years or so. Listen to me, Cap. You got to face it. The serum isn't as potent as it was in the old days. Hmm. You think. Not Mr. Barnes. Feel that. Tell me I'm still not in top fighting form. Hate to twist the knife, Steve, but I was the one who saved Rick from the Hulk. At the mention of his name, an awkward Rick James listens intensely. Look, Steve, I'm not cut out for this job I have with S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm secretly. I've always hoped to become the new Cap once you retired. But, I, but I've always been afraid that without the super soldier serum, I never live up to your name. But now, I think I can cut it. Yeah, and the new Captain America will be needing one of those boy sidekicks. Unless the old one wants to be blab the world his secret identity. Naturally, the youth is only jesting. But he has made his point after some deliberation by the two older men. Let's go, Rick. Wahoo! I'm coming, Cap. But man, can't you yell something a little hipper? Then, wahoo! To the world at large, there is no new Captain America. He is assumed the same hero born in the Holocaust of World War II. Yet, in this Earth's mortals have not been deceived, for that which Captain America represents must ever remain unchanged by the winds of time. Yet what of Steve Rogers, the original red, white, and blue freedom fighter? Buck was right. Being S.H.I.E.L.D. director is better suited to a man of my age. If I happen to slow down, I've got a veritable army to back me up, and I've got to admit, I don't mind giving the orders. This is Hope Steve Rogers, agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., the last battle against Hydra to be waged, where S.H.I.E.L.D. Submariner has brought him his elite corpse. Well, Steve, this finishes this gang of Hydra killers. Now, do we go inside? Any minute now, Sharon. But first, we wait for reinforcements in the form of one guy. Seconds later, as a colorful figure parachutes from a private plane. Thanks for waiting, Steve. You know how I wanted to be in on the big Hydra kill. You really think I'd pass up the opportunity to teaming up with you again, Cap? Someday, Cap and I are going to team up permanently. Even on this world, there is a love between a Captain Carter and Sharon Carter. Shield, code number 13. If this is to be Shield's last mission against Hydra, then Shield will no longer need the services of Agent 13 or Cap Barn. Then the new Captain America instinctively takes the lead. There he goes, living up to that symbol that is Captain America. But I saw Sharon tense up. She's counting on him hanging up his shield when this thing is over. I wish her luck. Now, what, Steve? We just can't blast our way inside the volcano. No need to thanks to Tony Stark's brain toys. This gun fires an anti-sonic beam that will tear open the door silently. Oh, don't ask me to explain it. And once inside the volcano, the silence persists, save for the sudden sounds of fists pounding against hard skulls and four bodies crumbling against the stone floor. Funny, isn't it, Steve? My putting on one costume over another. Not as funny as this volcano looks on the inside. Looks okay to me. But then I can't say I ever been inside a volcano before. What I mean is no one would risk building up a setup like this in a real active volcano. You think it's fake, Steve? Hey, you three cut the gab unless you want us to get caught. Before we get to our hands on the Supreme Hydra, good Lord, will you look at that? I need more power over here if we're going to increase the smoke output. So that's how it's ar done artificially keeping this volcano active to discourage people from coming near this island. Hey, something's happening over there. Oh, wow. Don't know. We got to hear these itchy hoods don't down here. We all know each other. Shh. The master is ready to speak. The Supreme Hydra is about to address us together. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra. In unison, the hooded Thrawn proclaims the dreaded name until a figure appears before them. A figure who, though dressed as they are, is obviously of a higher castle. At long last, it's finished. The device capable of draining the life force of any living being. With this weapon turned against the world, soon no one will dare oppose us. And I shall rule this planet to further the cause of our new master race. Wait, Supreme One, before you continue, something's wrong here. Uh-oh, but women aren't allowed on the Hydra base. He's right. I never saw a Hydra uniform 
hug curves like that before. Guess there's no need to stay in these ugly dugs, gang. So, so it's time to do a quick trip tease, right, Cap? Captain American here. I don't believe it. They're they're all gonna fight all of Hydra. Two guys, a punk, and a broad. You hear that, Agent Thirteen? I heard. Rick. Guess it's time these characters learn. It's not polite to make fun of a lady. Just like back in the big one, eh, Steve? Let's reminisce later, Cap. Like after we've cleaned up the Hydra base and swept up all this dirt. Hey, Steve, somebody's got to reach that oversized zip gun before. Rick's right. I've got to get control of this weapon while there's still time and worry about the Supreme Hydra leader. He moves with the speed of a considerably younger man. But as Steve touch Steve Rogers touches the gleaming finish of the weapon, he is unaware what occurs during his unconsciousness. So the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. finally begins to revive the fool to think he and his three comrades could defeat the hordes of Hydra. Then Steve's eyes blink open. He learns, leans forward as far as restraining clamps permit. That voice, his manner, could it be? It is good that you are awake here, Rogers. I can use another conscious guinea pig to test the weapon. Uh, what happened? The weapon, as your American ears would say, booby-trapped with electricity. Frankly, the shock should have killed you. Wait now. Sure, I know who you are. Not even that get up could disguise Hitler's number two henchman, Voss. But how could you? Then if you know there's no need for this charade, for beneath the mask of the Supreme Hydra leads another far more terrible mask, that of Baron Zemo, whom the vermin Red Skull put to sleep for more than 20 agonizing years, and who still wears this unremovable hood fastened to my face by a worse enemy than even the Skull, your mask ally, Captain America. Good God, Zemo's cons completely insane. He's already seen Captain America mass that day in England, but now he doesn't even recognize me. Either the years have been harsher on him than I thought, or Zemo crazed mind won't equate my face with the superhero on the on that operating table. There, Steve Roger lies. My reason for organizing Hydra the way I did after escaping the Skull's castle. Not only would my minions wear masks, as this swine do me to be forever masked, but so I could not be confused by the sight of other faces. You see, I had to remember one face. The face of a man who reclaimed the drone plane making me fall further and that Vatterland face I have remembered for all these years of the man I have sworn to kill. The face of Vass. That is not Captain America. Zemo's more deadlier than ever now. No telling what he might do crazed as he is but maybe there's still a chance. Maybe Zemo didn't build those bonds for a guy even a 50 year old who got a shot of a super serum getting winded but have to keep the adrenaline pumping. Have to keep straining not only for Cap, Sharon, and Rick but for the whole free world. You have deceived me, American Oz, and even you are not my most hated enemy. You shall perish, as shall all the foes of Hydra and Baron Zemo. Slowly, a glove figure squeezes back the pistol trigger, but no way, Zemo. Within a scant moment, Steve has freed his companions, only to see it's Zemo's flunkies. They must have heard the commotion from the other room, ready to show him how the weaker half of this team can fight. I didn't know there was a weaker half, Rick. Wonder if I've got time to get my mask on first. If you heroes are finished chatting. Let's take those Hydra scum before it's too late. Master, use the weapon. But as the figures of Zemo stirs to full awareness, I cannot reach the experiment went with in this melee, but I still possess my handpiece, and I shall yet destroy my foes, even if my own men get in the way. Cap, Bucky, are you hit? Nah, miss me. Captain America's words are enough to promote the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. into action. We waited outside till the designated time, Steve, but where, where's he now? Then mop up what's left of those Hydra killers. Mr. Supreme Hydra is for me, but you called him Bucky, and you, he called you? What's wrong, Noxie? Afraid to say it? Here's a look at my face. Look real hard. Captain America, yes, now I see it. You won't just feel, see, you'll feel a fist that you haven't felt since the war. Baron staggers, but then he fears the heart now spurs him to move. As the former superhero spots something shiny on the floor, run, Zemo, but you won't go get that far. Captain America isn't that old and stiff that he can still throw his shield. No, reacting with a sudden terror, Baron and Zuma buckles barely missed by the spinning shield. There is my sound of metal, striking metal as the missile disrupts the Baron's machinery, and which produces and maintains the artificial magma of the volcano. The boiling water splashes across the floor. Steve Rogers drops the shield, springs forward. Zemo, grab my hand. I'll get you out of this place. Zemo, it is in this moment that the, even only for a short while, the real Captain America is born again. Everybody get out of here and seal off the room because the lava is spreading fast, and the fake lava or not, it's hot. But within a, just a second cap, soon it bruises my knuckles one more time. And as the last two Hydra agents suddenly collapse, it's all over. Or almost all over. As the adjourning room now sealed off from the molten lava. It's okay, Steve. We got everything.
everyone out. Got Zemo's weapon still in there. No loss to the world, but the shield technicians might have wanted to examine it. But forget the weapon. How's? How's Cap, Steve? Look at him. Yourself, Mr. Shield Director. You were so concerned with Zemo, you never saw me have to drag him out of the lava room. That's why he lied about me not getting hit by Zemo's blaster. He wanted you to go after Zemo, Steve. Buck, Cap. I wasn't fast enough. Not strong as you, Steve. I know. Now there is only one Captain America. Oh, my dear God. I hope he'd retire after this mission. Hope the two of us would get married. Oh, Cap. Oh, Cap. If only there was something I could say to them or even to myself. Rick might have understood why Bucky died. Rick shared his responsibilities. But with, with Sharon, it was different. And how can I ever make her understand that in my own way, I care for Bucky more than anyone? Sharon blames Steve for putting Buck on the path that led him to his premature demise. But Steve insists he understands Buck's sacrifice more than she believes. The costume of Captain America is retired to a museum, but Rick Jones already has aims to be the next to take up the legacy. And will this reality know a third Captain America? That is not my right to answer. Yet this I shall reveal that as long as injustices prevail in the world, as long as there be voices crying for freedoms denied them, there will be a need for those whom mortals call Captain America and Bucky. Next issue. What if? Volume 1, Issue 6. What if the Fantastic Four had different superpowers?